located the interpreter as the interpreters uh, oh relocated and apologize for any inconvenience as the interpreter's image will seem further away than usual. I want to thank you for your patience. This is something that just happened late this afternoon. Uh, but we will make things to happen, and when we do a meeting of the minds a little bit later on tonight, this is the only podium we can use. We can't use that podium at all. Sheldon Stevenson, lead us with our invocation. Technology is a wonderful thing when it works. Absolutely. So like a wife. <laughs> I always think of my role here is to hold before you the fact that God is present here with us and that he expects great things from us. I... Um, to do this, I would like to hold before you what I think is a meaningful analogy. I want you to pay careful attention to this because it's important. I came here from the southern tier of New York State. If you can know New York State, you know that's the, the area of the Finger Lakes. There are countless lakes across there, and uh, there are big... They're deep, they're good fishing, um, and all, good, all kinds of good things. These lakes, 20, 20 to 40 miles long and so on, were our glacier lakes. Mm -hmm. They were made by the glaciers. That whole area was covered with ice. And out of that glacier age came the most beautiful country the world has ever seen. Now, I hold that before you because uh, people have been wondering about the rain and what that's going to do in terms of our land and our place here. And uh, what I'd like to say to you is what I think is true. In all events, God has something beautiful something wonderful to create out of every moment so that I would hold that before you as an analogy um, my wife and I came here and we looked all around Arizona and all around Florida and all around New York um, North Carolina before we came here and we chose Morganton because of its greatness because of its beauty, because of its, its initiatives. I wonder what God has in mind for us in a trust. May we pray for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our prayer of grateful praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Introducing our city council on my far right is Dr. Alfred Hamer, city councilman. City councilman Forrest Fleming, our city attorney Louis Vina. I'm Mel Cohen, your mayor. Sally Sandy, our city manager, Sidney Simmons, city councilman, John Cantrell, city councilman, and Kelly Russell, who just stepped away, is our recording secretary. Uh, Becky Brinkley is over here <laughs> interpreting for our deaf community. A little out of place today, but we'll make do. Uh, Gary Linhart, come to the podium, if you would, sir. Gary has spent all his life with the city of Morganton. <laughs> came to the city in 1968 just a, a mere child a lot more hair a lot more hair <laughs> 45 years of service Gary and I greatly appreciate it thank you a lot well, for everything you. and you're welcome to say anything you'd like to uh, just simple. well of course the 
city's been a great place to work and i appreciate it good people to work with and for and so uh i wish it believe it or not i wish it was starting all over again tomorrow but uh it's not and of course i'm planning on retiring at the end of this year but uh and i'll be back again in december for that i guess but thank you and appreciate it thank you gary Public advocacy issues and strategies. I'm going to have to, uh, at this point, read uh, four proclamations, but I want to say a few things. First, uh, we had our first TGIF this past Friday, and we had, uh, it looked like uh, two or 3,000 people downtown being conservative. They were everywhere, and it was a, a, a chilly night, but it was well attended, and we greatly appreciate it, and those nights go right on. Farmer's Market, Saturday morning at uh, Railroad Station, and on uh, Wednesday afternoon uh, at the um, corner of Avery and uh, uh, Green. Uh, I'm pleased to see uh, one of our county commissioners with us, Jack Carroll. Jack, thank you all for taking a stand on the Western Youth Institution, and hopefully uh, you all will be successful in trying to get that uh, taken care of and left here in Burke County. Thank you. Uh, Probably about as important as anything, we had a visit today with uh, our Secretary of Commerce, Sharon Decker. Uh, Sharon came and spent the afternoon with us here in the city of Morganton, and a, a group of people. We went on a tour of uh, Morganton and looked at industrial sites, looked at state institutions, and talked to a lot of people at Broughton. Uh, I mean, talked about Broughton to a lot of people, and uh, uh, we've got to come up with some good ideas that, that take uh, – a small amount of money to uh, utilize those beautiful buildings over there because uh, that's important. That's an issue that we cannot afford to let those buildings cave in. Uh, Secretary Decker met with about 10 or 12 uh, business people upstairs this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and we're hoping to see uh, some um, uh, good things come out of her department. She is very articulate. Uh, her associate told me in Raleigh that uh, you can't back her to the wall, and we couldn't back her to the wall. She was just a great lady, uh, and she had an answer for everything and good answers. And want to let you know that we hope that uh, Burke County will be on the, the list for some economic development. All right, first um, proclamation, Bill Lennon, if you'll go to the podium. Proclamation, National Mental Health month sponsored by the Mosa Christian Counseling, whereas there is a proven connection between good mental health and overall personal health, and whereas mental illness affect almost every family in America, and whereas people with mental illness often recover if given the necessary services and support in their communities, and whereas millions of adults and children are disabled by mental illness every year, and whereas only one out of four people with a form of mental illness seeks treatment for their mental illness. And whereas uh, stigma and fear of discrimination keep many who would benefit from mental health services from seeking help. And whereas good mental health is critical to the well-being of our family, communities, schools, and businesses. And whereas greater public awareness about mental illness can change negative attitudes and behaviors toward people with mental illness. And whereas the city of Morgan to calls upon its citizens, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools to recommit to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness, reducing stigma and discrimination, and promoting appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illness. Now, therefore, I'm Mel Cohen, Mayor of the City of Morganton, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2013 as Mental Health Month of Morganton. Adopted this the sixth day of May 2013, Mel Cohen, Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk. Make it form a motion, guys. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Bill, you're welcome to talk 25, 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> Mayor, Council, we appreciate this very much. I'd like to call on, uh, as, as Board Chairman currently for Mimosa Christian Counseling Center, we appreciate this proclamation for Mental Health Month, and uh, I'd like to call on one of our counselors, Reverend Laura Roach, for just a couple of comments real quickly. Laura. Mayor Cohen, Cohen, Cohen <laughs> Council, and uh, Madam City Manager, we thank you for this proclamation for May to be observed as um, Mental Health Month here in Morganton as it is nationally. Um, 
and as you mentioned earlier, Morganton is known regionally, statewide, uh, and nationally to be among the best in hospitalized mental health care. However, our citizens and residents, for them, therapeutic mental health counseling is not as accessible as one might think. <clears throat> many who seek help for depression, anxiety, grief, fear, family struggles, and many other accepted stressors of daily life are not getting much needed preventative care. Increasingly, we hear about um, or experience people of all ages withdrawing into themselves, suffering from depression, hopelessness, uh, and other concerns. And we also see ex and experience horrific events in the news of people lashing out with destructive behaviors all too often killing themselves and harming others. And so today, the safety net of government mental health services is being stretched and is significantly challenged with cuts in programming and access to budgetary funding. So never before has the need for mental health services been in the forefront. Providing mental health counseling requires the awareness of the public, along with support from citizens, businesses, churches, schools, and institutions. We all must work together to erase the stigma of mental health care that prevents one in four people from seeking help. In 2004, Mimosa Christian Counseling was founded in Morganton as a community of faith supported mission outreach for all Burke County and surrounding area citizens. Mimosa opens its doors as a refuge for those suffering with emotional struggle. The five certified counselors at Mimosa have aided over 1,600 individuals and families during this time. And today, well over 30% of those being assisted by Mimosa are unable to access traditional counseling due to lack of insurance or personal financial strain. As a community-based nonprofit, we at Mimosa remain a unique provider to those in need, but require the prayers and support of the public, businesses, churches, and private donors to continue its mission of restoring hope for individuals and families. Mayor, Council, this month, Mimosa Christian Counseling Center joins with mental health professionals throughout our state and country to bring attention to the seriousness and scope of mental health issues around us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate it. Next one is Relay for Life Weekend 2013. Whereas, um, whereas cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States and the leading cause of death in North Carolina. And whereas it is estimated that more than 1.6 million new cancer cases will be diagnosed in the United States this year. 51,000 51, new cases of cancer will be diagnosed in North Carolina this year and an estimated 580,000 Americans are expected to die from cancer this year, over 18,000 of them North Carolinians. And whereas the American Cancer Society is a nationwide community-based volunteer health organization dedicated to eliminating cancer as a major health problem, and whereas the Southeast Division holds one of the top positions in the United States for the largest fundraising events, for the American Cancer Society and hosts over 3,365 Relays for Life events in, involving more than 400,000 volunteers in honoring cancer survivors, educating the general public about the importance of cancer prevention, detection, and raising funds in the fight against cancer. And whereas Morganton will hold its annual Relay for Life involving several hundred volunteers and survivors this weekend of May 10th through May 11th, at the Freedom High School football field. And now, therefore, I'm Mel Cohen, Mayor of the City of Morganton, North Carolina, to hereby proclaim May 10-11, 2013, Relay for Life weekend, and urge all of our citizens to participate in this effort to eradicate cancer as a major health problem by preventing cancer, saving lives, and diminishing su suffering from cancer through research, education, advocacy, and, s and service. Adopted this the sixth day of May 2013. Mel Cohen, Mayor, Sally, Sandy Clark. Make this a formal motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Did you beat Alfred? Nancy, you beat Alfred. I just want to take a moment to um, thank you, Mayor and Councilman. <coughs> 
and city manager for um, doing this proclamation. You heard all the statistics Mel just shared with you, and um, I would just really encourage everyone to come out this weekend and support Relay for Life. Um, this year, our goal is to raise $82,000. Last year, our goal was $80,000. Um, we actually hope to raise a lot more than that, but um, with the help of all of the citizens, we can do that. We have over 61 teams. I think we have 62 teams this year, which is just from getting out and sharing the information, people are becoming more aware, and um, that's the way we are going to get funding, which is needed for more, um, not only services here in our county, but also for research um, to make better drugs that will help and also um, they have hospitals in Charlotte and um, where they actually, people can go and stay for like $35 a night, the families during treatment and such. And so all the funding um, besides research also helps people through the American Cancer <coughs> Society. This year's theme is Happy Days, Twist Out, cancer shout for a cure it's going to be a 50s theme the survivors dinner is at five o'clock and the relay itself will start at 6 p.m at freedom high school and we will have all kinds of events starting actually like at five o'clock with the school bands and it will go all the way until nine o'clock saturday morning and we really encourage you all to come out and be a part of this there's something for everyone it's a family event and um, we're going to have a silent auction out there, and there will be lots of different bands. So thank you, and hope to see you all out there. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate it. Proclamation for Drinking Water Week, uh, May 5 through 11, 2013. Whereas water is our most valuable natural resource, and whereas only tap water delivers public health protection, fire protection, support for our economy, and the quality of life that we enjoy. And whereas any measure of a successful society, low mortality rates, economic growth and diversity, productivity, and public safety are in some ways related to excess to safe water. And whereas we are all stewards of the water infrastructure upon which future generations depend. And whereas each citizen of our city is called upon to help protect our source, water, our source of water from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues by getting to know their water. Now, therefore, be it resolved that by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Morganton, do hereby proclaim May 5 through 11, 2013, as Drinking Water Week adopted this, the sixth day of May 2013. Mel Coyne, Mayor Sally Sandy, City Clerk, make us in form of a motion. Sure. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Brad. Brad is a new addition to our city really staff. Nice On behalf of the Water Resources Department, I thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and Council Members and City Manager for proclaiming this Drinking Water Week. There's a lot to know about our drinking water, where it comes from, how it's treated at our treatment plant, how it's delivered to the customers in places of business, and the laws that are put in place to help protect it. So I would just encourage and welcome all customers to visit City Hall this week and learn a little bit more about their drinking water. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Mr. White, where's the very back. Come to the podium and I'll do the resolution. Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month, May 2013. Whereas interest has continued to increase in motorcycle riding as a form of recreation transportation, and whereas the Goldwing Road Riders Association supports the safe operation of a motorcycle specialized rider and co-rider training, the use of good judgment and knowledge and observance of traffic laws. And whereas the national observance each May of Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month brings attention to the importance of actively promoting safe motorcycle operation, increased rider and co-rider training, improved licensing efforts, and motorist awareness. And whereas by working together to increase knowledge of the special needs of all road and highway users while encouraging all users to exercise added caution, we can make our roads safer for everyone. 
Now, therefore, I, Mel Cohen, Mayor of the City of Morganton, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the week of May 27, 2013, through June 1, 2013, as uh, Morganton's North Carolina Motor Motorist Awareness Week. And hereby I encourage all drivers to be aware of motorcyclists who share our roads and highways and to work together to reduce motorcycle-related crashes, injuries, and fatalities. Adopted this the sixth day of May 2013, Mel Cohen Mayor, Sally Sandy City Clerk. Form of motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Mayor, Councilman, we appreciate this on behalf of Chapter Y. Uh, GWRA, the Gold Wing Road Drivers of America, it's a nationwide, worldwide organization. There are approximately 36 chapters across North Carolina. We belong to Morgan Chapter Y. Uh, we thoroughly enjoy it. Our motto is Friends for Fun, Safety, and Knowledge, which we always try to adhere to. Uh, the end of May, the 31st and June 1st, our chapter and the Forest City chapter are having a little thing over at Catawba Meadows called Hillbilly Hoedown. It's a Friday night pinto bean supper, slaw and cornbread, and Saturday, come back, we'll feed you a pork or beef steak. We will welcome all of you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. What's the date of that again? It'll be <laughs> May 31st and June 1st, Good Friday time. and Saturday. I have a resolution and proclamation honoring the 10th anniversary of the History Museum of Burke County. Is anyone here to accept that? I'm going to be presenting it um, uh, Friday at 520 in the afternoon, and I want to make a motion that we accept this resolution and proclamation honoring the 10th anniversary of the History Museum of Burke County. Second. Okay. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Consent agenda, Sally. Mm -hmm. No, municipal power. Uh, nothing at this time. Our consent agenda. Mm -hmm. The consent agenda before you tonight has four individual items included on it. Those are minutes from the meeting held on April the 1st, 2013, tax releases in the amount of $356.16, an amendment to the schedule of fees and charges to establish a fee of $2.95 per month, for renting a modem wireless router for compass cable and also consideration of amending the parking ordinance to include a handicapped parking space in the 400 block of South Sterling Street. That says yeah. green, but it is South Sterling Street. Sterling. Would ask that you consider those items in a single motion unless someone would like an item removed and discussed separately. Have we approved the uh, consent agenda? Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, items removed, no. Uh, new business. Public hearing to public hearing for this. I'm going to open up for the City of Morgan to community, community Development Block Grant, C, uh, Block Grant, CDBG Entitlement Program Action Plan for 2013-14. Sally. Okay. Uh, Lisa Helton is here tonight to talk to you about the program and the plan for July 1 to June 30th of 14, um, our new CDBG money. Good evening. This is our yearly entitlement money for, from uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, this year, our estimate for funding is $150,203. Uh, we have three different categories for that. Small business loans, $97,703. Grants and nonprofits, $22,500. And administration, $30,000. Uh, the public hearing is to receive any citizen input for that. Any questions? Any questions of Lisa? Okay. Make the motion to approve the city of Morgan. Oh, I'm sorry. Is anyone in the audience would like to speak for or against the CDBG program? Close the public hearing. Council. So the motion to approve the city of Morgan Community Development Block Grant uh, CDBG Entitlement Program Action Plan FY 2013. <laughs> 
2013. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Thank you, Lisa. Also need to approve the budget ordinance and the administrative contract. And the budget ordinance is for the $150,000 in the three amounts that she presented breaking down in the programs. It just basically allows us to set up the budget for the coming year. So moved. Second. We have motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And the administration contract is with the Western Piedmont Council of Governments to provide Lisa to administer that program. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. Any discussion? Lisa doing the program. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Consideration of municipal election. Other business. Scheduling. Filing period. Filing fee. Mr. Mayor, if I may, the uh, as you know, this is a city election year. And by statute, under our nonpartisan election and runoff method, the election day will be Tuesday, October the 8th, with any runoff election, if required, being on Tuesday, November 5th, which is the general election day. Uh, notices of candidacy must be filed uh, by uh, or beginning Friday, July 5, and no later than Friday, July 19. Even though the city has contracted now, as you know, with the Burke County Board of Elections to conduct our elections, the city still has to set the uh, filing fee for those elections. The uh, two seats up this year are Council District 3, which is Mr. Cantrell, and Council District 4, which is Dr. Hamer's seat. Um, in the past, you have set the filing fee at $20 uh, for each seat. It must be a minimum of $5, and uh, the action required would be a motion to set the filing fee for each city council seat to be elected and so notify the Board of Elections. I make a motion to set the filing fee for each city council seat to be elected in 2013 as 20 bucks. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Consideration of amendment to city's policy on political action, Sally. Okay. Um, this is something, uh, an amendment to our political activity policy, and Louie is going to discuss that. Thank you. Um, October. As you will recall, we currently have a uh, political activities of employees policy, and that policy as it's presently uh, stated says that certain of our employees, but not all, should be deemed to have resigned their employment uh, immediately, effective upon their becoming a candidate for certain offices, namely Burke County Commissioner, Burke County Sheriff, or a member of the Town Council of Glen Alpine or Drexel, in all cases because of the close relationship and ongoing relationship that the city has with those. Um, and as to those employees not being to have automatically resigned, the city manager is given some discretion to allow such an employee to take a paid uh, leave without pay while campaigning, which raises two serious issues. One, it treats some city employees differently from others, and two, it places the city manager in an awkward position of having to make such a decision. Uh, the staff in reviewing this felt it would be wise to simplify the policy by simply providing that, uh, by eliminating the discretion of the city manager and simply for providing that once any city employee becomes a candidate for any of those positions, again, county commissioner, sheriff, town councilman in Glen Alpine or Drexel, that that person is deemed to have immediately resigned their employment. And so your action would be a motion to amend and modify the city policy on political activity as per the attachment in your agenda. I move to amend and modify the city plan on political activity. Second. I have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion of this plan? Are there other uh, cities that are doing this same thing or have these, these, uh, these same proceedings in place? 
political activity policies yes. in general? Yeah. There are other cities that have those in place. Uh, the same size maybe that generally cities that are same size of Morganton or and, and larger cities, do they have this? I don't really know how to answer that. At the time that we did this, which has been quite some time ago, I think there were several cities that we had looked into how they had handled some of this. I do not recall who that was for us. I'm sorry. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consideration of amending the City Code of Ordinances, Part 2, Chapter 7, Article O, Human Relations Commission, Section 2-7163, Composition. Sally. Uh, this section deals with the composition of the Human Relations Commission, and what you're being asked to consider is amending that to change the membership from 11 members to 12, allowing for a student from Freedom High School and a student from Patton High School. At the time we did this, Patton High School didn't exist, and so the commission would like the opportunity to have a representative from each of those high schools. Okay. And the terms remain staggered so that you would never have a complete turnover of the entire commission and you would be able to have some stability on that commission. Motion to amend the City Code of Ordinances, Part 2, Chapter 7, Article O, Human Relations Commission, Section 2, that's 7163, Composition. Second. Oh, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We have Barbara Myers with us. Barbara, I want to tell you that last week the um, event that the Human Relations Commission put on at the community house was outstanding. I want to commend our city council for being 100% there to support you and support human relations in Morganton and Burke County. And uh, thank you for a job well done. Thank you. Uh, consideration of appointments to the Human Relations Commission. Uh, and they're my appointments. Um, we have um, Barbara Myers these, and Wayne Giese and Bruce, Grace Norton. Grace Norton uh -huh. uh, are the three, and I'm going to reappoint them uh, to. No. No. Um, uh, we, we have Grace. three vacancies, terms that are expiring. And both Wayne and Barbara have expressed an interest in continuing Stand. to serve. Okay. That would leave the position vacancy. The other position would remain vacant okay. until you have a suggestion. Okay. You have one vacancy, okay? Uh, I make I appoint y'all, okay? Be appoint. Yeah, free appoint. Thirty day notice of vacancies on boards and commissions, Sal. Mm -hmm. This is the time in June is when a lot of our boards and commissions have terms that, that expire. Um, we will bring a list of these back to you next month with consideration um, of folks who are recommended to serve on those. That includes the Board of Adjustment, the Cable Television Commission, the Community Appearance Commission, the Farm and Supplemental Retirement Fund, the Human Relations Commission will have one uh, vacancy you just talked about, Main Street Advisory, Planning and Zoning, Recreation Advisory, and the Redevelopment Commission. Those are all boards and commissions that have terms expiring in June. Okay. I'm going to take about a five or ten minute break uh, between now and, and before I start the uh, comments, the appearances, to give uh, Becky time to Relax a moment, and then we will start the uh, appearances, and they'll appear over here at this podium, and I'll give you the ground rules when y'all come back.
All right. We'll go live again in one minute. Live again in one minute. Thirty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. We're live. Caroline, don't you don't get up until I call you because I'm, I'm gonna say a few words. Okay. I don't want you to, have to stand up any length. I know. Uh, let me uh, tell you, uh, we're here for the duration. As long as it takes y'all, we'll be here. To, um, we, because of our technical difficulties, I was going to use two podiums. What I want you to do is line up at this podium uh, with a line and actually go around. But I want to, I want to be sure everybody's there. And and instead of waiting until somebody sits down, y'all get in a line. And uh, and what we're going to do is you got to state your name and where you reside clearly into the mic for our recording secretary. Um, you will only be given three minutes, and three minutes will be counted by the city attorney. Um, we want you to utilize your three minutes if you want to utilize it all or not, but anyone speaking after the first speaker, you've got to pick a different subject. In other words, give me new ideas that haven't already been told to me by the previous speaker. And that's the way we've always done it, and I'd like to keep it that way. And uh, But always give us new ideas when you speak. We will only allow you to speak one time. We're not going to allow you to go back up to the podium to speak to refute someone that spoke before you. Those are the ground rules that I set, and the, podium, the, uh, the gavel is here, and I don't want to adjourn the meeting because someone's not doing the uh, the rules properly. But I want to say a few words before I ask Caroline to go to the podium. The city of Morganton has been in the utility deposit business since the early 20th century. We were an early electricity because we, we, may, we produced our own electricity. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Utility deposits are collected by most utilities across America. It's the best practice. And it's a standard in the utility industry is utility deposits. The city's utility fund, water, sewer, electric, and cable, are business enterprises. Now, I want to say that again to you. Those departments are business enterprises. They're not, they have to make their money and have to show a profit or the state will come in and run it. Such is required by the state of North Carolina. It's self-supporting each department. It's not a social service. It's a business enterprise. The letter in the paper said we lost $300,000. That's not the way it was presented, is that we have write-offs just like every utility in America. I'll get to that in a minute. Water, sewer, and electric utility bill customers in arrears. After the service has already been utilized, cable is just the opposite. Cable bills in front. Just much like many of you may be in this room that are landlords, you get a security deposit in the first month's rent. You do it in advance. 
Morganton Utility Deposit Policy for Residential Customers was amended in February of this year, 2013, after a presentation and consideration at the annual council workshop, a public meeting properly noticed per general statute. There's a lady in, maybe in this audience, called City Hall, and said that I called a unofficial rogue meeting the week of the 25th of March. That person, if she's in this room, see me after the meeting. We'll talk. That is untrue, and that is a lie. Don't do things like that. We had a reporter at that workshop. The meeting was reported on at that workshop. The amendment did not change who pays a deposit. We'll say it again. The amendment did not change who pays a deposit. It only changed the amount which had not been adjusted in 32 years for sewer, 21 years for electric and water. Secondly, in addition to updating amounts to better reflect today's cost of providing utility service, a tiered structure based on credit quality was adopted. Why credit quality? It's fair to all people. Credit quality is a nationally recognized standard. Customers that are not credit worthy pay a higher deposit. That's an elementary fact. They're more risk. Places a burden on those with more risk rather than spreading the cost to all customers. Can't do that. It's not fair to the people that have a good credit rating or a medium credit rating. If you think it's fair, let me know. The reality for customers with no credit or not credit worthy, there is little or no means of collecting unpaid balances. No collection agency or state program to pursue unpaid balances. Must have a social security number to pursue collections. The $130 that had been in existence for many, many, many years for a person with good credit only went up $60, 30 years, $60. We're dealing with three utilities, ladies and gentlemen, not one. Any customer with one year payment history from any electric water sewer utility without a late fee being assessed do not have to pay a deposit. On water customers outside the city limits, customers pay double the amount for water deposits. I'm going to say this twice. Homeowners do not have to pay a deposit. Homeowners do not have to pay a deposit. Our commercial and industrial customers are required to pay deposits. No refund until no longer a customer, regardless of payment history. This is very important. Any residential customer who pays a deposit can get the deposit refunded after 12 months of on-time payment in full of amounts owed. I'm going to state that again, or did it, I want you to hear this. Any residential customer who pays a deposit can get the deposit refunded after 12 months of on-time payment in full of amounts owed. Unheard of. I want to ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a good renter that pays you their rent on time every month, you give them their security deposit back? Water and sewer customers only, no electric for a little town like Archdale. No deposit is required for good, uh, good credit. $300 for unworthy credit. $300. Havelock, another small town. $300 for not credit worthy. One, I mean, two, two utilities, water and sewer. Orange County, where Chapel Hill and Hillsborough are at. 
not credit worthy, a hundred dollars. That's just for water and sewer. Natural gas only, Piedmont natural gas, three hundred and fifty dollars for, and it's based on really the, your credit and your home size. Three hundred fifty for not credit worthy. One utility. Rutherford Electric, not credit worthy, $440. One utility. We have a, a group of electric cities near and around us. They're all over the board, all over the board. Lexington, $230 if you're not credit worthy. Statesville, $300. Granite Falls 350, Granite Falls. Drexel 200, Lincolnton 300, Shelby 180, Newton 390. Many other towns charge for an application to get a, to get your credit check. We don't. This is a statistic that is unusual. When we started this in late March, a total of 30 people inquired for for their uh, uh, what the utility deposits were. About 30 people. We have 12 good people that asked us to run their credit. 12 good credit people. 12 people. Medium credit. There were four. Not credit worthy, there were 22 for a total of 38. There's a standard. All our finance department has to do is hit the computer and it tells you whether the person will pay their bill or not. I don't know what, the, I guess they contact all the people along the stream of, of the towns that I've mentioned and maybe more. And they said that the average likelihood for these customers to pay their bill is only 20 percent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running a business. It's your business. We're the utility that put your electricity on in six hours in Morganton when Hugo came through, not six days. 37 of 38 of those people came in and paid the deposit and are customers of ours today or either they had their landlord put it in their name. 37 of the 38. Now, it was misstated in the newspaper, but every utility in America has write-offs, people that they can't collect from. In 2011, we had $425,000 of those. Do a lot of business, though, but that, that sounds like a big figure. It is a big figure. 2012, 296,000. 2013, 131,000 up to this date. There's an agency that we put some $74,000 worth of uh, bills with, uh, uncollectible bills, and they collected 3.5% in 2012. 3.5%. There is a, or a way that cities and towns in North Carolina that are members of the North Carolina League of Municipalities utilize them by going to them with an amount of money and they'll garnish your state tax refunds of individuals that get one. Not everybody gets a tax refund, state tax refund. We put $836,000 with that agency, North Carolina League of Municipalities, and they collected 59% of that amount of money. The big way to avoid the deposit, I don't have to, I shouldn't, I'm preaching, preaching to the choir. Y'all of the choir is for the owner of the units to put their name there for the utility.
if they've got good credit. Sad note is the letter to the editor stated that um, utility deposit growing in a time when the slow economy. I agree. That's why we borrowed $11.5 million to upgrade our waste treatment facility that the state and federal government mandated. A mandate, unfunded mandate. That's why we had to borrow $1.7 million to, as we speak right now, upgrading our water plant, just like we're doing at the sewer plant. And if you've watched our uh, annual budget, we've had an increase in electric rates every year. Duke Power is right now in a battle with the Attorney General over electric rate increases. I don't have to tell you. You read the paper. It's happening everywhere. It's not just us. We're in business. Your groceries went up. I'll tell you that for the benefit of the people that don't, that don't really know where our figures are, they're on the Internet, everything. They've been on the Internet ever since we had Internet here in the city of Morganton government. You can go there and look up anything you want to from the city of Morganton, their budget, our budget. I guess it disappoints me to know that we have, I can't remember how many homes we've got, 6,000 homes in Morganton. And in all practicality, I had an older lady call me up over the weekend and wanted to know if she owned her own home and if her deposit was going up. And I said, ma'am, you don't have a deposit. She's lived in her house 30, I think she said 35 years. I think we're as fair as fair can be. I know Dr. Omar worked with me for about 45 minutes one day. We're fair. Sidney Simmons about an hour and a half, two hours. Louie, he worked with Louie, he's worked with Karen. We try to answer questions of anybody and everybody that come up here. We will put you with the right person to explain to you what we're doing and how we do it. Okay, now we'll start with the, um, Caroline, state your name where you reside. I'm Caroline Irvin. I live at 108 Terrace Place, Morganton. Thank you for allowing us to speak. We're fortunate in this city to still have a local newspaper, the Morganton News Herald, three radio stations, WMNC AM, WMNC FM, WCIS AM, and a government-run channel on our cable system, Channel 2. The city's full-time public information officer has at his disposal a website with many links and a monthly city newsletter that goes to each city utility customer. A few keystrokes on the keyboard and with the magic of the internet, press releases and public notices zip to database bases and local media worldwide if necessary. Yet with these advanced communications Available in 2013, a 215% utility deposit rate increase on first-time electric customers had to travel by word of mouth to city residences. I would like to thank Dr. Dr. Aziz Omer for being a messenger who has worked with much energy to inform the public of this matter. As a realtor with 24 years experience, I know that in our co today's economy, like never before, every penny matters. The electric deposit increase will affect those who have lost jobs, those who have lost their homes to foreclosure, and even new families looking here to, to call Morganton a place of home, for their home. Love of an area will not outweigh financial considerations in making a home or a business here. 
So please use the newspaper, radios, TV, and internet to keep us informed. We need to know really easily. Everybody's not going to go on a website. We need to know when a decision is made, whether we do agree or disagree with it. And thank you all for having me. Thank you, Caroline. We want you all to be up to the microphone. Aziz, if you would, come up and stand behind Dick. Mr. McCall. My, na <clears throat> My name is Richard McCall. I reside at 112 Garrison Drive in Drexel. I'm not a citizen of Morganton, but I have 15 rental units inside the city limits of Morganton. I want to address you about the deposits. My concern is for the person who rents a low rent housing, not somebody that rents a house from me that's $700. My concern is the one that rents it down into $325. I have two units that are $325. I rent these to people who are retired, single, that type. They don't have a lot of money. And when you ask them if they were to come today and ask to rent this apartment, and I ask 325 and a 325 deposit, and then they have, maybe they've, maybe they've got bad credit because they had a major illness, and it's reported to the credit bureau. Or maybe they work at a factory who is going on short time. That affects people's credit. That don't mean they won't pay you. That just means they got bad credit because they got turned in. I think that's where when you rely on credit just by itself, it really penalizes a lot of people. Young people don't have any credit. Landlords just have to do the best they can. It, it's sort of like renting from the gut sometimes. You, you take your chances. And people today come to me and they say they want to rent. They got enough money to pay me the rent and the deposit, but they don't have enough money to pay your $130, which was, it's not anymore, but it was $130. They don't have that money, and they want to know if I'll work with them. Will I let them have let, let them move in and, and not, not have to pay all that deposit at one time. When I do that, I get stuck, just like you get stuck. It, it's just something that, it, it just happens. People just don't have any money. And, and it, I, think, I think it's just terrible. I rented, a, Go ahead. Go ahead. I rented a house just recently to a single mother with two children. It was on REA. She, it, the house rented for $500, so she had to pay me $1,000. And we, we, got, we went through all the paperwork and everything, and it got down to it. The power was in my name. And I told her, I said, I cannot give you a key until you take this power and get it put in your name. And she says, I don't have any money to do that. Time. Okay. What did we do? She moved in. I, I turned the power off. She moved in, and end of story. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dick. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Daniel Gutierrez, and I live in 112 Oak Street. And I thank you for the opportunity to be here, and I'm going to try to time my time. Um, before I came to talk to you, I read your rationale, and I understand your, your decisions. But uh, the problem that we're facing right now is exactly not the what, but the how. Uh, I understand that sometimes when you talk to even some communities, like in the Hispanic community where I serve, we understand that increases are necessary. It shows the how and the lack of information that we have towards that particular community that is giving the wrong message about the increases. The, the, the big change from going from 130 to 400 for some of them is a strong message that is like putting a sign on exit 105 that will read, welcome to Morganton only if you have almost perfect credit. And uh, many people that we serve and interact, 
uh, they understand that the government is based on some laws, but we as immigrants are based on a different kind of law sets, and we go by the Napoleonic law that reads guilty until you prove the opposite. And sometimes when we run into these circumstances, we can tell that 400 for some of these immigrants will be extremely hard for them to do it. If you were to talk about a family of four that is trying to rent a place, they will have to come out not only with their moving expenses, but also with the deposit and the rental, and we're talking about maybe $1,200. And I think that we need to reconsider maybe the amount or maybe try to propose a, a process so they will be able to follow this. Uh, many of the places for rent are taken by newcomers that maybe they don't have perfect credit or they don't even have credit at all because that is the first time that they will be allowed to move in or have some kind of status. I, I hope and pray that your decision is based not only in this idea that three sizes fit all and that, that you will be able to reconsider maybe the process for some of these people that are trying to make Morganton their new home. Thank you, and God bless you. Daniel, um, stay there in a second. We go way back. And I, when, I don't know how to best do what you want to do, because today's electric bill for an average home or apartment is going to be bucking 275 to $300 a month. We don't know that they don't pay until they do that month that they don't pay. Huh. Go in two more weeks, and if we haven't heard from them, that's when we cut off. And that's right at getting close to $400 a month. If you think we like to do what we're doing a lot of the time, because I love what I'm doing, but I, so this is not one of the finer things that we have to do, but we have to make sure that we run a business, particularly those enterprise funds of water, sewer, electric, and cable. <coughs> and uh, we're around, I see you a lot, you, you're in City Hall, sit down with Sally and, and, you know, I just, I don't know how we can help you and the people that follow you. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not that smart. I think that we just have to try to communicate and inform in ways that they can really understand. I understand that it's complicated, but when you're coming from this worldview that is guilty until proven the opposite, we automatically can speculate that we're being judged by something, and it's not really good. I will say that we can do something different. And of course, if we can work with you, that's what we're here for. We love Morganton, and you can count on it. I know that, Daniel. And I was impressed by the public records that Karen gave us of the 38 people that had their credit drawn, and 37 of them are our customer. I mean, that's saying something. You know, I know people are saying we're running them out. We're not running them out. I mean, that's, that's a pretty darn good percentage. Mm -hmm. But anyway, come by sometime, okay? Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Pastor? George Logan from uh, 101 Inglewood Drive. And um, I was brought into this uh, just recently, probably in the last couple of weeks, uh, concerning the um, increase in the deposit. I'm neither a landlord or, uh, and I'm not on the city council or anything like that. But uh, what I see is, is from, where, from my vantage point, we have a lot of people that come in because of the times. And uh, we don't help with deposits. You know, when people come to our church to, uh, looking for help for our utilities, uh, we do the very best we can. Sometimes we do more, sometimes we do less. Uh, what I see is, is it, 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 what I would pose to the, to the council. Uh, I, I think I can understand you all's position, where you're coming from, you're running it like a business. Um, what I would say is, is there any room for a bit of grace uh, a, a bit of uh, mercy uh, for on the behalf of those who, who are going to have some challenges making a four hundred dollar deposit, um, and I don't know what 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 type of room or margin you have, but if there is if there is any margin, 
I think it just serves the community well to be as merciful as we possibly can. Uh, the thought that comes to my mind is uh, the merciful shall receive mercy. I think we're in a time in our community where no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, even the city, uh, we're all due for a bit of mercy. We, we need as much grace as we possibly can. And I'm speaking on behalf of those who, who have poor credit, some who are coming out of prison, coming back into the community, have either no credit or bad credit, uh, who are looking just for a foothold, uh, somehow to, to make it. And I'm not saying that you, we should go back to the old deposit, but is there any room for the reduction of the deposit for the sake of uh, those who, who uh, need a bit of help? And, uh, and I think that's where I'm coming from. I think, it's, I think we travel down a very slippery slope if we don't at the very least discuss these options and figure out if there's a way uh, to be, uh, as I said before, a bit more merciful. Thank you, George. Thank you. Hello. Mm -hmm. My name is Cindy Ross. I live at 126 Pearson Drive in Morganton, and I am the property manager for Breeden Real Estate. As the representative for Breeden this uh, evening, I would like all of you to know that we have we manage many properties in this town for numerous years since 1989. <coughs> During these years, we have seen many changes in our economical environment, and we have had to make adjustments accordingly for that, such as reducing our security deposit rates or letting tenants pay the deposit in multiple payments and we have to do that because the folks just do not have the money to come up with it. But now with your new security deposit rates for utilities, you have created you have created created, sorry about that, something that we cannot adjust for. I don't know how to make any more adjustments for them. We try to work with our tenants uh, when they come in. Um, we have numerous owners that are not happy with this. And they have voiced their opinions to us, and they are very concerned that they're going to have vacancies. Please remember that we are considering your rates. New people coming to town are young. They have no credit. And we do have lots of teachers that come to town, and they have no credit. But if they, when we run a credit report and it says no credit, we give them the opportunity we, we lease to these folks, okay? And sometimes no credit is just as good as good credit in our book. And, and the folks that, um, and these young folks are the ones who are coming to our city, who are, are um, bringing more revenue to this town for us. I love Morganton. I mean, I love the people here in Morganton. Um, and I've been doing property management for many, many years, and I've seen lots of things, and I've heard lots of things. Um, at Breeden Real Estate, we overlook all medical bills because you and I both know that the medical field, everything's astronomical, expensive. I don't know what y'all look over when you see a credit report, but there should be things that you should to determine someone's credit. I mean, I've had elderly folks come in, and they have two or three... Two or three patients, I mean, two or three pages of medical bills. You know, we can't deny people like that. They need a home. But I would like to thank y'all for letting me speak tonight on behalf of Breeden Real Estate. I've done property management for 25 years. I've seen it all, and I've heard it all. I think we all need to talk and communicate together and see if we can help the future of Morganton. Thank, thank you, Cindy. You. Honorable Mayor, Honorable Council, staff, the best uh, city manager in the state of North Carolina. I stand here tonight as a student of local government because 40 years I've studied these issues very carefully. That the city manager says that, uh, that you have a revenue problem, then you have a revenue problem. But as a, as, um, as an observer of the fine city, I have studied all the information that I can find 
that's on the internet and has been at my disposal. The only question that I do not understand, and I propose to you tonight, Mr. Mayor, in the spirit of not repeating what others have said. By the way, your commentary was uh, of, of enterprise uh, system was as good as, as you could have done. Uh, you accurately portrayed what an enterprise is, and uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't have done a better job myself. But the, the question I have, Sally, is, is I'm assuming that this is a dedicated trust account and the money is only used to pay delinquent uh, utility bills. Is that correct? It is an escrow account. It is set up in a liability account, so it's not an asset of the city. And, again, you have the opportunity and have always had the opportunity to establish good credit with us. If you don't have any credit, we take the deposit. You pay us on time for 12 months. You ask for your deposit back. We will give it to you because at that point, you have established good credit. The, the, the money is not commingled into other areas? No. It sits in a liability account under the individual's name so that we know it goes back to them and, and we make refunds of those deposits. Now, if you move out and, and moving someone at somewhere else, you know, you can ask to apply that to your last bill or what have you, but it is for that person, that account. An interest-bearing account. It is not interest bearing for the individual. Right, but, but overall, the, the account is dedicated for this purpose is an interest bearing account. Uh, no, not really, because, I mean, again, it, it is <coughs> segregated from the rest of the city dollars, okay. if you will. Like, for if every you day, pull it's, the it's record separate. and it says Sally Sandy, $300. Is that what you're asking? To use your words, Mr. Mayor, I would be singing to the choir if I talked about the economic uh, uh, status of the county and the city. These are hard times for these young people, and I ask you to be flexible. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, can you give me your address, please? <laughs> 240 Sequoia Circle. That's the uh, neighborhood that was voluntarily annexed 16 years ago that doesn't have sewer. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Simmons is my representative. <laughs> Becky, 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 you need a break. Then you don't have to pay a sewer deposit, do you? <laughs> my name is Gwen Huffman, uh, 2831 DAV Avenue, Morganton, uh, but I have uh, business in the city limits. Um, first of all, I want to say I was not the lady that called you. I don't know what that was about. But, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, you said if she was here tonight and you looked at me, and I thought, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't look at you for that reason. So anyway, that wasn't me. But um, uh, And I want to say that uh, we all know there are no free lunches, and we don't expect any, but we just wanted to not have to pay more than our fair share. And another thing, uh, landlords can only charge like one and a half times what the monthly rent is. So... Um, and that can only be used for rent, but we also have to use that deposit to pay for damages. Um, so somebody has suggested put the power in the landlord's name, but what would happen if they don't pay? Uh, we cannot turn the power off, even though it's in our name. You ha we have to evict. There's no way to um, get the money back. So that would come out of their deposit, too. Um, and that one month deposit would not nearly cover that, um, especially if we have to evict them. Um, so uh, we're just asking that you uh, not charge more than the average bill of one and a half. I don't know what an average bill would be for a uh, light bill. Or when I mentioned to you, I meant it, mentioned it earlier, an average bill on an average home size, small size, could be anywhere from 275 uh, you know, in the wintertime, full electric home. Uh, you got water and sewer on there. Uh, it could be 275 to 300 dollars in the winter, and then you you don't cut it off until you know they're not paying, and you go into the next month, two weeks, six, uh, six so it's total six weeks, and you cut it off. I mean, you've got to you can't do it any earlier than the the one month, you know. Mm -hmm. The deposits are figured on average to collect 
one and a half months. Yeah. Are they? Okay. By the time you, you move through the process mm -hmm. and you send a notice and then you give time to pay once you get the disconnect notice before you disconnect the utilities, it's usually about six weeks is you know, what you're looking at. And the bottom line, and it's a concern, is why we waited 32 years on sewer and 21 years. We just did. Everybody got an advantage of that being uh, low uh, deposits for so many years. Same way with privilege licenses. We went through a similar situation of, uh, Gwen, I'm, not, I'm taking, not taking your time. Mm -hmm. He's having to recount. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we can't help that the utility bills are getting higher, not because we're Morganton, but because every municipality, every utility is having a similar problem, whether it's REA or, or Duke Power or whatever, but, you know. Well, another thing, and it was uh, briefly addressed, but uh, will there be any kind of exceptions for hardship cases? Or have y'all considered that? Or if you would, uh, you know, maybe consider that. She's writing it down. So that was yes, no, maybe so, certainly. <laughs> 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 but that's fine. But that was just a suggestion I would have. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. My name's Dr. Aziz Omer. I'm from 101 Irvingdale Lane here in Morganton. I've been here 44 years in the city of Morganton. And uh, thank you, everyone, for giving me the privilege to speak. And uh, I would just like to point out a few things. Uh, Mayor, we had a conversation two months ago where you had stated to me that you would not go over $200 on that deposit when I had mentioned a higher rate. Aziz, I don't remember saying that to you. You said we, that before to Mr. Simmons. I don't remember ever saying that to you. I, I can't right. set rates myself. You know right, that. Right, right. Well, we did discuss this, and you did say that. You told me it would be too high to go over that number. These, I'm not going to argue with you okay. here. Right. I'm taking your time up. You better okay. go ahead and speak. Uh, all right. I want to just point out that there's some clarification required. There's a $33 million on the electric fund. There's no discussion of how that money is actually spent. We talk about the general fund, but we don't talk about that electric fund. And if that electric fund is being utilized, because I know we've used it at one point in the 1990s to fix the compass cable problem, I don't know if that money is still owed back and if that money is being used in other ways. They're so, paying that money back. Correct, correct. So I don't know, we don't know that information if that money has been paid back or not. So, you know, that's that's one of the part of the problems. but. The uh, the other issue that I wanted to talk about is that uh, why we have gone to such an extreme from $130 to $400 when if the company has to be profitable and is a business, then why we have gone to such an extreme because I assume most businesses to function properly for 30 plus years would have gradually increased their rates just as Louis Vinay had given me that insight to say that the city of Morganton should have been gradually increasing their rates if that need be. We had this conversation. You could take that up with Attorney Louis Vinay regarding that matter. And as for Sally Sandy, I asked to speak with her when I presented to you last city council meeting that I wanted to discuss it. You told me that she would be on vacation for three weeks and that you would be getting back in touch with me. I never heard anything about that either. And as for Sidney Simmons, I did talk to him about this. He said he would take that into consideration and that we would discuss this. In fact, in the April 9th newspaper, you yourself stated that there's a chance for revisitation to this. At that point, you did not point out that there was going to be a, there was a $300,000 a year loss on average without stating how long that loss has been going on. It could have been unlimited. We have no real transparency of what's actually going on. You know, there's, there's budget proposals and how much the budgets have, but we have no idea in reality what the losses have been and where those losses have been coming from. 300000 on average from a $33 million a year fund is 0.46% a year. Well, I think we can spread it around and make it insignificant. If we're going to be competitive... Seconds. If we are going to be competitive, 
as a Morganton utility company, we should be competitive, not equality. Otherwise, we would have a regulated commission as Duke Power or someone else. We're wanting a chance to double it and see what happens. That would be $260. It's just an opportunity to resolve. It's just too extreme. That's These, we went $60 from the good credit to what it is today for good credit, $60. I just want to make one more comment. When you use Rutherford Electric, they also have another plan. It's called pay as you go. That means that you pay a minimum of $115 or so to set it up, and then you get a pre, you get an automatic call to your phone, like a text that says, you know what, you've got to put more deposit. That way people don't have to come up with an extreme amount of money. Rutherford Electric offers this outside of that zero, 225 and 400. Time. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Anyone else? Mr. Chairman? talked about it's not really what it is it's what it's perceived that it is and that's a big deal and I think people look at that big jump and they've got a real concern about it so all I'm asking you is to maybe not make a decision on tonight open it up think about it a little bit and see if there's any wiggle room in that okay thank you Don you're welcome thank you ma'am The text of most of everything that I said, some things I added, you can come up and get a copy. It's very thin, so be sure uh, if you want one, you're welcome to get it. It's a public record. Um, anyone else? I greatly appreciate everyone being here. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>